Many of you have probably driven through rural Canada and the US at some point. I'm going to take you on that road trip right now, and we're driving past the field of corn, and another, and another, and well, I'm afraid this goes on for hours. It's going to be a pretty boring road trip. Eventually, though, our scenery changes, and we arrive at a beautiful beach on Lake Erie, but a brightly noti colored notice stops us in our tracks, a no swimming advisory due to an algal bloom. Now, it may not have occurred to you, but all those fields that we drove past are what's polluting our lake, and it has devastating impacts on the natural ecosystem and the human economy. So how can growing food miles away pollute the water here so much? Well, like our crops, fertilizer, or algae feed off of fertilizer too. We've been trying to reduce the amount of fertilizer we're losing from our fields into our streams and lakes by using strategies known as best management practices, or BMPs. They generally work well for individual farms, but after waiting for years for them to turn our water clean again, they don't seem to be doing as much work as our models tell us they should. So we think it's because we need to improve the way we predict how BMPs affect water quality. I'm working on doing just that by incorporating a potentially important natural phenomenon that has not been traditionally accounted for in our scientific models, lag times. So to illustrate the idea of lag times, imagine that car to be a particle of fertilizer making its way to the lake. Just like it took us time to drive to the beach, the fertilizer also needs time to make it there. But depending on the route that it takes, it could get lost or held up on the way, and it could be years before it finally arrives. You could say it has some pretty poor navigation skills. So because we haven't been accounting for the fertilizer that's lagging behind and arriving to the lake much later than we thought, our expectations of how fast BMPs will work are too optimistic, making it seem like all of the money that we've been spending on them so far have been fruitless. So by accounting for lag time, we'll be able to have more realistic expectations of how fast and how soon we can see these water quality improvements. And we can make more informed long-term plans and policies so that we can, um, including putting the funds in the right place for the right length of time, so that cleaning up our lakes no longer seem like such an impossible and futile task. And we can move one step closer to being able to enjoy our clean lakes and beaches. Thank you.